This is section 2.7. This is part three. We are solving linear inequalities. We are uh, writing them, our answers in interval notation, and we are graphing them. Okay, so I have 3x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 11. I am going to work this the same way I would in e if it were an equal sign. I want to move the 2x over to here. So I subtract 2x from both sides. That gives me 1x, or just x, plus 7 is greater than or equal to 11. Okay. Now I need to move this over to here so that x will be alone. So I subtract 7 from both sides. And I get x is greater than or equal to 11 minus 7 is 4. So for on my number line, to do the graph, I have to have a 4. If it helps you, put in some other numbers. Okay. And figure out which side you need to be, to be shading on. My variable. You look what side it's on. It's on the wide side. Remember, wide and right, they both have eyes in there. So I'm going to shade on the right-hand side of this 4. Or you can look at the numbers. 5 is greater than 4, so I shade towards 5. 6 is greater than 4, so I shade towards 6. Now I just need to decide whether I put a parentheses or a bracket right here. And I look to this sign. It has an equal to on it. Therefore, it gets a bracket. This is the answer to your graph part. Now use this to find your interval notation. You're always going to describe what you have shaded. Its left-hand boundary is a 4. Its right-hand boundary, it goes up forever. It goes up in the positive direction. All my negative numbers are over here. It goes up in the positive direction, so it's a positive infinity. And infinities always get parentheses. We decided that since this had an equal to, it got a bracket here, so it also gets a bracket here. Remember, my math lab is going to have you enter this part first and then pick the correct graph. On paper, you just do them in the opposite direction and you'll be fine. You're just going to enter your answers in the opposite order. Okay, let's look at 5x minus 2 is less than 4x minus 5. Same type of problem. I need to get my x's together, so I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. 5x minus 4x would be positive x, 1x, minus 2 is less than negative 5. Now I need to add 2 to both sides. And I have x is less than, negative 5 plus 2 would be negative 3. So the number I must see on my number line is a negative 3. I need to figure out which side of this I need to shade. So this is negative 3, this would be a negative 2, negative 1, 0, this is negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and so on. I need to figure out which side of this to, to shade. You can pick numbers and, and see if I check negative 2, is negative 2 bigger than negative 3? Uh, it, I'm sorry, is negative 2 less than negative 3? No, it's not. It might help you to use 0. 0 is definitely not smaller than negative 3, so I'm not shading in this direction. My variable is also on the narrow side. Narrow goes to the left. So I'm supposed to shade the left-hand side of that negative 3. Now, what do I put on here? This is a less than. There is no equal to on it, so this gets parentheses. This is the answer to the graph portion. For interval notation, it's always your left-hand boundary and then your right-hand boundary. Well, where does this start off? It goes all the way off here to infinity in this direction, in the negative direction. So I start off with a negative infinity as my left-hand boundary. My right-hand boundary, it goes all the way up to a negative 3. 
Infinities, whether negative or positive, always get parentheses. This one had a parentheses here, so does this. Your negative infinity will never be on the right-hand side of an interval notation. A positive infinity will never be on the left. So positive infinity only happens on the right. Negative infinity only happens on the left.